Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'll be answering a viewer's question. They asked, just curious, why are there so little CCIEs and CCARs in the world? Is that because the certs are genuinely difficult or because they just take a lot of time? For those who don't know, CCIE stands for Cisco Certified Internetwork Expert and CCAR stands for Cisco Certified Architect. These are two very high level certifications from Cisco. And as someone who studied Cisco certs and studied Cisco a lot in general, I feel I have a decent amount to say about this. So hopping right into the actual content, I'll start out by explaining explaining the different levels of Cisco certification. So what we're looking at here is just a simple map of the certifications and their levels. It's actually a bit more complicated than this because each level has different specializations, but for the most part, we have like the associate level, a specialist professional level, which is CCNP, and then an expert level, which is CCIE. To get the associate level from scratch, you're probably looking at 200 to 250 hours of study and about $300 just to attempt the exam. The professional level or CCNP requires probably an additional four 400 hours worth of study and you need to pass two exams in order to get it. The first exam is $300 and then the second exam just to take the exam is $400. And if you pass both of these, then you can get a CCNP. And I believe the level in between the specialist level, you obtain that when you pass one of the two specialization exams required for the CCNP level. And finally getting into the expert level, that is the CCIE, which is the first part of what OP asked about. This is where things start to suck a little bit. So first of all, it's going to take an additional 2000 to 2500 hours hours, you need to take a written, which is not so bad, I suppose, but then you need to take the actual practical exam where you have to fly somewhere physically and then take it in person where you're kind of proctored there. The written exam costs $450 and then just to attempt the practical exam, it's another $1,900. Most people, I would say, at least from what I've read, they usually attend some kind of boot camp and they don't take the boot camp when they're learning it. It's like they get ready to take the CCIE, like they go through the grueling study process and then they polish themselves off with the boot camp. And the boot camp, depending on where it is or who you take it, it could be anywhere from like $5,000 to $10,000. And people take this because they don't want to fail a whole bunch of times. And the boot camp really helps give them that kind of final polish they need to like bring their skill to where it needs to finally pass the practical. And to say CCIE is difficult is a bit of an understatement. It requires a lot of study. And by study, I don't just mean like, oh, I'm going to go to the cafe and like study lightly. It's like really mentally draining study with like a lot of practice and intentional repetition and getting a deep understanding of all the protocol that are covered in the exam topics like deep level protocol like you're going to be reading like the rfcs and, and that type of thing it's not like an easy thing to study for and touching on ccar really quick actually the architect level has since been discontinued but before in order to even qualify to take it you need to have an expert level certification you need to have cisco certified design expert already but you also need to pay fifteen thousand dollars for the a quality qualifications review as well as a challenge board review and at this point I kind of asked myself like why why anyone would do this um I, I suppose if they want do they just want to like have the credential or something I'm not 100% sure why I, I mean I guess it's kind of appealing but the cert got discontinued anyways so getting into why there's so few CCIEs and by few I just mean like relative to other certifications for example according to CompTIA there's about a million people who hold CompTIA A+, whereas CCIEs I believe there's somewhere between 60 and 70,000 when Whenever you get your CCA, you get like a number assigned to you. And if you're old school, you have, you know, some low number, like 5,000 something. But if you're like a brand new person who just got it, maybe your number is like, you know, 70,321 or something like this. So getting into why there's so few of them, basically it boils down to, in my opinion, there's much easier ways to make, you know, 180 to 200K rather than going through those grueling trials to actually become a CCA. There's way easier and less mentally taxing ways to make that kind of money. So to become a CCA, you just really, really have to want to be a CCA just for the sake of being one. It's not like I want to make money, so I'm going to get CCIE. Like it has to be more than that because there's easier ways to make that kind of money. If you read stories about what people have had to do, like what they've had to sacrifice and how stressful it's been for them. When committing to the CCIE exam, you need support from your family and your coworkers. The amount of hours that you need to dedicate to study for this exam is not easy. I never left my house. I didn't party. I didn't do anything but study for a year and a half. It becomes like really apparent there's there's just better ways to go about making that kind of money. So you just have to want to be a CCA for, you know, whatever your reason is. Because if you think about spending that time on something else to even get to, for example, CCNP level, it's almost a thousand hours of study. And then on top of that, you need to do another 2,500 hours to kind of put that into perspective. The average full-time person, if you work eight hours a day, it's about 2,000 hours 
hours a year. So it's like a year and a half of full-time studying and trying to do that on top of your job, it just tends to be like really hard. And if you take that amount of time and energy that you would take to study for CCIE and study for some other field that's lucrative, like software engineering, for example, where you have to grind data structures and algorithms, you would get to the point where you could like, where you could just bang out leak code hards really, really easily. And you can just go and work at any of the, the manga or fang companies or however you want to say that. And it would be, it would be relatively cushy and you, you wouldn't have to spend that much time to be able to get to that level if you're doing coding, for example. So there's just a lot like, you know, easier ways to make money essentially. And I, I really, really used to want to be a CCIE was like so appealing to me and I'm really good at studying right I can just sit down and study for hours and I have so many certs already a whole bunch including CISSP and a bunch of other things and I ended up getting CCNA and I got halfway through CCMP and then I was like this is not very efficient and I was like I like networking in Cisco but not that much and I just like quit doing it and I went to do something else and here I am like I'm conventionally you know doing okay and I but I just never got CCA because it just wasn't like economically worth it to me or I just didn't want to get it that bad I guess. So I guess in short, you just, it's hard and you really have to want it. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Instagram. 